Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Friday uh, the Top 13. And in this video I will be doing my Top 13 Films of the 1940s. Full disclaimer that the 40s is by far not one of my favorite decades for horror. Uh, yeah, these uh, films on my list, I like them okay at best. Uh, granted that I have not seen a lot of the classic horror films of that uh, that decade. They just don't seem to be available to stream anywhere. And uh, for, for that decade, I really want to see them before I purchase them. Because, uh, yeah, they're really hit or miss. But uh, here's my top 13. Uh, and they're, uh, they're limited to a lot of the classic Universal Monster films. And uh, a few of the, the ones you might expect on a list like this. So uh, here we go. So my first pick is a uh, film that came out in 1943, and it's the first one of the Universal mashup films where more than one of the classic monsters uh, is uh, uh, seen on screen. So this film's called Frankenstein Meets Wolfman. Uh, this film is about the Wolfman who uh, is accidentally revived after a, a group of grave robbers uh, open his grave and the <clears throat> the moonlight shines on him it turns him into werewolf he's alive again uh once he's back as a human he uh, seeks out the uh, the gypsy woman uh, who advises him that he uh, he may be able to get the help of dr frankenstein so he travels to frankenstein's homeland of course frankenstein is dead but he goes to the uh, frankenstein's castle and discovers a monster and tries to find frankenstein's notes uh find a way to, to kill him because he does, uh, he wants to be dead uh, so this is one that I like the story a little more than its execution but uh, it is pretty cool to see both monsters on screen they do fight right at the end which is a little disappointing but it's really cool when you see it for number 12 I went with my favorite uh, film of the original The Mummy franchise. It came out in 1942. It's the third in the series. It's called The Mummy's Tomb. And in this one, the uh, the mummy, Karis, is uh, brought to America from Egypt from by one of the, uh, the, the priests there. And uh, so he goes there and um, is kept in like a cemetery where he's sent out to kill the people who are involved in the desecration of his I guess his wife or his queen's uh, tomb back in Egypt. So uh, it's pretty good. Um, they completely ripped off the uh, ending to Frankenstein there where he's trapped in a burning building. But I like the visual in this one a whole lot. It's got some really uh, cool scenery and uh, cool pictures. So uh, if you haven't checked out the, the series, check it out. I uh, like them quite a bit. And for my number 11, I went with the 1940 film Black Friday, starring Stanley Ridges, uh, Bela Lugosi, and uh, Boris Karloff. So this one is about a college professor who gets hit by a car, and uh, he's uh, laying in the hospital dead dying. So his, his friend, played by Boris Karloff, who's a, a doctor, uh, decides to... Um, uh, perform a brain surgery in which he replaces parts of his brain with the uh, brain of a deceased person who happens to be a uh, psychopathic gangster so uh, so he makes a the the patient makes a recovery but starts to have his personality change eventually he kind of converts all the way to that uh, killer um that gangster so it's a, a pretty good i really like stanley ridge's uh, performance as the professor slash the gangster He's uh, showing that he's very um, adaptable in that way. So uh, it's one that I had a lot of fun with. Okay, so going into my top 10. Number 10 is going to be a 1945 film called House of Dracula. So uh, this film is about a doctor who lives uh, in this castle slash big mansion kind of deal. And uh, Doc or, uh, Count, Dracula, Tr <laughs> Count Dracula comes over claims that he's looking for assistance to cure his vampirism so he's al he's allowed to stay in the basement of that mansion in his coffin 
and uh, while he's there, uh, he gets a visit from Talbot, the Wolfman, who's also looking for assistance with uh, his lycanthropy, trying to cure that. So he's been meeting with the Wolfman, and uh, the doctor tells the Wolfman, this, uh, I can figure out a cure for you, but it's going to take a long, long time. Uh, Wolfman is not happy with that reply, so he jumps off a cliff, tr tr attempting to kill himself. So uh, the... Um, the doctor climbs down the cliff, uh, finds a cave, and looks for the wolfman in the cave. He finds him there, but also discovers Frankenstein's a monster who had been washed up into that cave as well. So all the monsters together. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what happens and uh, who dies or whatever, so you have to check it out. It's a really good one. House of Dracula, the sequel to House of Frankenstein. Okay, going into my number nine. Number nine is going to be the uh, Son of Frankenstein in which uh, Lon Chaney Jr. plays uh, the son of Frankenstein uh, called Alucard. And so he's a Hungarian prince with vampirism who uh, travels to the U.S. to visit uh, a woman he loves who uh, whose father happens to own a plantation and this big mansion. So uh, he um, he dates this... Uh, the that lady secretly the uh, and kills the father so uh, when he marries that woman uh, he uh, you know controls the uh, the estate or uh, the plantation and uh, the woman he marries she was uh, engaged to marry somebody else at one point so uh, he becomes super jealous tries to shoot Drac or Alucard and it goes through him killing the woman who is then discovered to become a vampire as well. So a very interesting story. Um, obviously Lon Chaney Jr. not the best vampire but uh, the uh, another one where like the um, the story is really cool and the, uh, the set and some of the special effects are alright. But uh, yeah, if you haven't seen that one, check it out, Son of Dracula. And moving on to number eight. Number eight is going to be uh, the 1944 film House of Frankenstein. So uh, this one also features all of the uh, monsters, or most of them, the Universal Classic Monsters. In uh, this one, Boris Karloff is in it. Unfortunately, not in the role of Frankenstein, but he, um, he plays the role of a doctor who has been jailed and escapes along with his hun hunchback companion. They uh, join a uh, traveling freak show in which uh, Boris Karloff's character kills the, uh, I guess, the owner and then assumes his uh, identity. And on this traveling freak show, uh, they contain the, uh, the bones of uh, Dracula. So he revives him and uses Dracula to exact revenge on the... Uh, some someone who was responsible with uh, jailing him and then eventually he travels to uh, Frankenstein's ruined castle where he discovers the wolfman and Frankenstein's monster uh, frozen in ice and so he thaws them out um, uh, Talbot is back uh, he's revived once more he just uh, the doctor says I'm gonna help you out uh, secretly he's more interested in reviving the uh, the Frankenstein's monster another really cool one uh, I was surprised at how much I liked that one and I really enjoyed the ending it was very uh, dramatic as well so check that out House of uh, Frankenstein alright so number seven is gonna be a film from 1940 starring Vincent Price and it is the uh, second film in the uh, Invisible Man series and that film is called The Invisible Man Returns so I'm always going to be a little bit biased towards Vincent Price films because he's one of my uh, absolute favorite actors. So he um, is a, a gentleman who is accused of killing his brother. Uh, of course, he didn't do it, but begs his buddy, Dr. Griffin, to uh, inject him with the serum that makes him invisible so that he can exact his revenge and kind of prove that he's... Uh, that he's innocent so he does that and he attempts to do this before he loses his mind which is one of the side effects of the serum so a very cool film I enjoyed it quite a lot uh, so if you're a fan of the original I highly recommend you check this one as well 
Moving on to my number six. Number six came out in 1943. It uh, stars Claude Rains, the original Invisible Man. This film is uh, Phantom of the Opera. So Claude Rains plays the Phantom here. He is an aging uh, musician at this theater. He's let go because he's starting to lose function in his hand. And uh, so people assume he's well off because he's been in this uh, show for so long. But... Uh, no one knows that he's actually broke because he's been helping fu he's been uh, funding this uh, new singer at the theater who's he he's head over heels for so he's broke so he decides to write this whole concerto on piano goes to a publishing company tries to sell it and uh, he gets into an argument there kills somebody and has acid thrown into his face which causes his dis disfigurement so he runs to the theater, has the Phantom of the Opera with the mask and kind of, uh, you know, does the the stuff that the Phantom does, you know, the uh, chandelier on the crowd, the um, poisoning of other singers to get the woman he likes uh, kind of on top. And uh, yeah, that kind of that classic Phantom of the Opera stuff. So one that I really enjoy, I mentioned before in one, in one of my lists that if there's a musical element to the story or in the, the movie, then uh, it's one that I really enjoy. Moving into my top five. Number five is a uh, film that came out in 1946. It's a whodunit film in which uh, the film keeps you guessing who the killer is. Uh, the film is called The Spiral Staircase, in which there's a killer on the loose who's specifically targeting people with disabilities. And uh, in this sick killer's mind, you know, there's no room in the world for imperfection. So he's been targeting these people with different ailments. And uh, the main character in this film is a woman who is a mute, who uh, has difficulty or can't talk due to a traumatic experience she had suffered as a child. So uh, in this film is during a rainstorm. So they're all in this mansion where this mute woman is employed it all takes place in the same place uh, same spot and once uh, people are discovered to be killed uh you, you know you you they know that the killer is among them so it's a whodunit film who's been killing uh very cool very um i love the blend of thriller and horror elements and it's just really cool and I think this one is free to watch on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. But if you can watch it, check it out. The Spiral Staircase. For my number four, it came out in 1944. And it's a film called The Lodger. So it, it's a, it takes place in London during the infamous Jack the Ripper killings. Uh, a very odd gentleman decides to uh, approach... This uh, residence, he uh, decides he wants to rent from them, rent a room, and uh, it's made pretty obvious that this gentleman is Jack the Ripper, so it's about the family trying to cope with the fact that they're living with Jack the Ripper. How are they going to, you know, reveal it to the police, that sort of thing, and obviously the, um, the killer is infatuated with the um, young woman who uh, also happens to live there. So there's a lot of drama there. It's a really good one. I think this one is on YouTube as well to watch if you want to check it out. The uh, Lodger about Jack the Ripper. Alrighty, so my number three is uh, another classic horror monster, universal monster horror film. And uh, I'm sure some of you assumed that it might have been my number one. I'm kind of a, a werewolf maniac, but uh, nope, it's not my number three. 1941's The Wolfman, starring Lon Chaney Jr., uh, who plays this uh, a gentleman who's attacked by a werewolf who happened to have been a, a gypsy played by the iconic Bela Lugosi. So he's attacked. He uh, manages to kill off the uh the werewolf and uh not before he's injured of course and then becomes one himself so uh very very awesome film um the setting is great there's kind of still this gothic feel the gypsy village you know it's kind of creepy and uh, he looks great in the makeup the wolfman makeup looks fantastic and 
the leading woman, Evelyn Anchors. She's a scream queen of that era. She's been in a lot of horror films. Beautiful woman. She's an absolutely phenomenal actress. Lots to love about The Wolfman. Unfortunately, it's at my number three. There's two more that I enjoy a little more, but uh, check out The Wolfman. Moving on to number two. Number three, I talked about a uh, man who turned into a werewolf. Uh, the following year, a film came out, 1942, about a woman who can turn into a panther. So that film is called Cat People. So like I said, this uh, woman has the ability to turn into a panther. Her, um, her uh, I guess... Uh, forefathers or whatever you want to call them her ancestors there you go her ancestors used to practice witch witchcraft and used to uh, you know hail satan so uh, people of her family have the ability to turn into a bloodthirsty panther and so she moves to the city and uh, meets this guy she falls for him but then he starts seeing somebody else so she becomes super you know super jealous and super stocky cat form stocky so uh yeah a lot of tension in that film really good one and um the one that i uh i remember seeing a long time ago we used to have a channel uh like when i was a teenager we used to have a uh, just a trial period channel and it just played black and white horror films and i saw it on there and that was it stuck with me man it's a super good film 1942's uh i forget what it's called but 1942's Cat people. There you go. Cat people. Here to uh, help remind me of the title. Yeah. Cat people. And finally, my number one. Uh, my number one is uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. So uh, I am an absolute sucker for horror comedies. And I'm an absolute sucker for Abbott and Costello style comedies so uh yeah it's a perfect blending there of horror and comedy and uh so yeah Ivan Costello they work at a uh uh train station and they're in they're in charge of the baggages and the shipments and stuff so uh they receive shipments uh, of uh, wax figures Frankenstein and Dracula and when they uh, are discovered to be empty they are jailed, and then later they are released from jail and sent to Dracula's castle to uh, investigate the missing figures uh, by a uh, investigator for the insurance company. So from there, hilarity ensues. You've got uh, Lon Chaney Jr. in the role of the Wolfman, Bela Lugosi back in his iconic role of Dracula. Fortunately, Karloff isn't in there. We've got Glenn Strange doing Frankenstein once again. But uh, just a fantastic, fantastic horror film, uh, horror comedy film, I should say. And it is my number one of the 1940s. Let me know what you love in, from the that decade, the 1940s. If there are ones that I should check out, I know, like I mentioned before, that I have a lot of films that, that I've not seen that are considered classics of that decade. I just don't have access to them. So uh, I'm looking forward to maybe eventually seeing them maybe revisiting this list in the future but uh, let me know what you guys think and uh, from now on I'm not going to do any more decade films covering the decade uh, I'm going to do a top like I'm going to do years so now we're in a new decade I'm going to do the first year of that decade so uh, I checked out 1950s there are no horror films worth noting from 1950 I'm going to move on to 1960. So my next film, hopefully, is going to be my top 13 films of 1960. So uh, looking forward to doing that. Looking forward to checking out some films, uh, films I've never seen before. And if you guys have suggestions for that year, some uh, must-sees, let me know. Of course, I've pro probably seen the bigger ones. But any uh, hidden gems you want me to check out, let me know. And I will, I, I may include them in my list, so uh, look out for that one. Have a good one. See ya.